I'm no longer going to use Postman to test my API. And you may think, Eddie, why not? Postman's great. Postman is really good. It served me so well for so many years. But actually, I found an alternative and I feel a better way to test my API and collaborate with the community and my team. Let me show you and explain why. In this example, I'm going to use our community Eddie Hubs API. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to set it up and run it locally. And this is it. It's still highly in development, but it's moving along really fast and the community are working so well on it. We've got automated testing, loads of exciting things. But that's a discussion for another time. So the API is running locally. And this is Postman that I'm sure you recognize. And I can send a GET request to the stand up endpoint. There's no data. We'll create some data in a second. And if I also go to Swagger, Swagger is another great way to document and allow people to play with your API. I can do a whole other video on this if you want. But if I do a GET request, scroll down to stand up GET, make a GET request, you can see the response body is empty, just like with Postman. But the third way, which I usually use, is within VS Code. There's a VS Code plugin that I use called REST Client, and it's really useful. There are other plugins on VS Code that look more similar to Postman and probably are more feature rich and more UI heavy. However, I love this one because it allows me to save my files in the repo. I know what you're thinking. You're going to say, Eddie, I can export and import to Postman. You can, but nobody does. And so therefore everyone has to set it up themselves. This is a file in the repo that you can commit. Let me show you. This is the file. I've called it requests.http. You can call it anything you want. It could be rest.http. That's fine. All you would do is exactly the same thing you would do with Postman. So if I grab that URL, head over to here and paste it. Now you see a button or a link has appeared above this URL, which says send request. So let's just send it and see what happens. There you go. That looks a little bit like an error, but actually it's not. Let me make the screen a bit wider for you. These are all the response headers. And here's the result, an empty array. We're going to put data in it in a second, so you will get to see what it looks like with data coming back. But that works. By default, this defaults, that's a lot of defaults, to get. So I can put get in front of it and it will still work the same way. So if I send the request again, we get the exact same result. Let's put some data in. The easiest way is actually to head over to Swagger. I can go to the stand up endpoint, but I go to the post. I've pre-populated some data here already. It already gives you the structure that you need, but it had the types so of string, string and string. I've actually put in some details and now if I execute this, you can see it has been saved and the response body is this. So now if we go back to Postman and make the same request again, we should see some data. Aha, magic. And if I go to VS Code and also click on the send request button, or you can use some keyboard shortcuts, you now see some data as well. And it's the same data. So it all works the same. So you're thinking, Eddie, but this isn't visually as good. Using this within VS Code allows me to save this file and allows me to commit this file to the project. Therefore, everybody else has this as well. And you're thinking, well, Eddie, maybe I want multiple requests. And yes, you are. You're going to want posts. You're going to want to get. You're going to want updates. You separate them with three hashes and then you could do another one. So we could do a post to the endpoint, add any headers that we wanted, add any data like we would with JSON. And then you can save this and you can send this request, you can add it to the repo and your entire team can collaborate on this file. So as new endpoints are added, as new test data and dummy data is added, you've all got it. You're talking about the same sort of things. So yes, sorry Postman, you served me well for so many years, but I'm going to be using this VS Code extension. There are other alternatives around, as I mentioned. Do let me know in the comments below which extensions you've tried and which you think are really good to use for a REST API. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe below if you haven't, hit the bell button to get notified every time I go live and post a video. On this channel, we focus on open source, upskilling you, growing your network so you can get the job, clients, and money that you deserve. Hopefully that sounds interesting to you. Let me know also in the comments below what videos you would like to see.